to Piano Rogues, and today we're gonna do a Draw Our Life! <laughs> this <Yay>! hand! <laughs> this hand! <laughs> Sorry! That's Hilaire! She's giggling and falling over. <laughs> On January 16th, 1987, the Swedish baby Ari was born at St. John's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And on July 23rd, 1986, the most adorable baby, Alaire, was born. Also at St. John's Hospital. Notice there's only six months difference. I'm still <laughs> older. <laughs> There are seven people in Alaire's family. There's Alaire's dad, and there's Alaire's mom. And my mom always used to wear her hair in a bun. It, 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 buns are hard to draw in stick figures. Okay. Um, Alaire has three brothers and a little sister. And then there's Alaire. Alaire is the second oldest. I have, I actually have two adopted siblings. Um, my second oldest younger brother is an adopted brother, and my little sister is adopted as well. And they actually both have special needs, so I think my upbringing was a little different for most kids because I grew up really thinking that you should not judge people by appearances and that it's a lot more important to get to know people. And um, I was also expected to help care for my younger siblings as I got older, which I think not all kids experience. Um, and um, my mom worked a lot, so I actually spent a lot of time just entertaining myself. I liked to make my own toys sometimes and I would make up stories about them. My little sister is 10 years younger than me, and my big brother is four years older. Ari's family had four children, three boys, one girl. One girl being me. Um, my Both my parents had to work. My mom always enjoyed having a baby in the house, so she timed our births out so that she would always have just one of us to take care of at home and the elder ones were in kindergarten. My eldest brother went to college when I was very young and the next eldest brother, he went to a boarding school because he was super smart and you had to be in the one top 1% 1 of the state to even get into the boarding school. So that left just me and my older brother who was four years older than me at home. When we are asked how long we've known each other, it's usually easiest to say since preschool because we both went to the same preschool and we mm -hmm. probably saw each other there, but you know, we don't remember much from that far back. Not too terribly much. But we all played in the same yard, so we probably did know each other. Mm -hmm. What I remember of kindergarten was primarily the bus ride to school and from school and there was this one girl that always sat in the front of the bus and she was very rambunctious and noisy and she would always sing the same songs over and over again. This is a song that doesn't end Yes it goes on and on my friend <laughs> One day on the bus, I remember this girl that was sitting in the middle of the bus. She was giving out these little crystal looking plastic horses and I made sure I got close so I would get one too. So this is Alaire 
and it's my turn to talk about kindergarten, but I honestly don't remember very much about kindergarten. I kind of remember being on the bus, and I remember saying boinky, boinky, boinky a lot, and I remember singing a lot of songs because I really liked to make noise. Still does. That's pretty much all I remember about being on the bus, but one thing that I really do remember is having a project. I had to have 100 somethings and glue them on a poster board to prove that I knew how to count to 100. So my mom went to a store with me and we picked out 100 pretty plastic ponies. They came in lots of colors and I was crazy about horses so I was really excited. And that day, I'm not really sure why, but on the school bus ride home, I sat in the middle of the bus for some reason, and some of my horses were coming off the poster board, and so I decided I was going to give some away to the other kids, because I wanted the other kids to like me. But I made sure that I kept the prettiest ones for myself. Sorry, when I was young, I remember that we had to go to babysitters often because both my parents had to work to afford to keep us in our house. And uh, one day we went instead to a brother's friend's house. I had never been there before. It was a little bit odd. They wore all sweatsuits and ate dinner really late. kindergarten I was homeschooled so I mostly liked it um, if I worked really really fast then I could get all my work done and then I'd have the rest of the day to play if I wanted which was pretty great but it also meant that I didn't have as much opportunity to meet kids my own age anymore so one day when I found out that my big brother's friend was coming over to play with him and he was bringing his little sister with him who was my same age, I was really excited. We were going to get to play, and I was going to have a new friend. She seemed a little shy at first, but I tried to make sure she had fun. One day when we were playing in the basement, we got out our full contingent of horses for the first time, which was a lot. And we both got out these little clear plastic horses. And we were like, oh wow, we both have these. And I asked Ari where she got hers. I told her about this girl on the bus one time that gave me a bunch of these little horses. And I was like, wait, that was me. And that's how we found out how long we had known each other which was quite a bit longer than we thought. Before we got to play, sometimes I would have to practice the piano because just about the time Ari and I started hanging out, I also started taking music lessons. Often. Sometimes. Often I had to practice. <laughs> <laughs> so she would sit in the room with me and keep me company while I would practice and often critique me. <laughs> Sometimes! <laughs> so we would entertain ourselves with commentary and arguments with the composers and spend a lot of time giggling. And to the point that her mom would get a wee, a wee bit upset. <laughs> and sometimes we would have to stop giggling quite so much. <laughs> Music is very serious, not fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how my mom meant for it to come across, but when we were kids and all we wanted to do was play, sometimes it felt a little bit like that to us. So Ari and I stayed friends all the way through middle school and high school. Constant phone calls, growing up together, going to dances, hanging out. We did lots of stuff together, and um, both decided to follow our dreams, and that took us in two separate paths for college. So we kind of had to go our separate ways for a little while, but we always stayed in touch. 
Mm-hmm. Constant phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we made we made sure that we stayed in contact. Ari went to college for equestrian science, and that was a culmination of follow your dreams and you must go to college to be successful met. And was not the greatest plan, but I was a kid and didn't really know any better and didn't have many people to look to for advice. Also, that didn't help is that I graduated in 2009, which is right when the recession was in full swing and people weren't really interested in luxury field. So it was probably the worst time to decide to try to get a career in the horse industry. So Alaire, as you could probably guess, went to music school. And um, I was working really, really hard towards my dreams. I was studying music, I was practicing more than I'd ever practiced before, I loved my classes, and I had big dreams of becoming a concert pianist and traveling the world and performing every place someday. Um, but meanwhile, like a monster lurking in the darkness, were my growing medical problems. And also, their best friends, my performance anxiety that got worse and worse, progressively worse, which is the opposite of what's supposed to happen when you perform more. Ultimately, unfortunately, my medical problems caused me to have to postpone my senior recital, and because of that, I had to graduate a semester late. But I graduated, yay! After college, I went to work full-time as a piano teacher, and it turns out I was actually pretty good at teaching piano, and I enjoyed it, although sometimes I got tired of continually telling my students where middle C was, but um, it wasn't really what I'd wanted out of my life, and I felt disappointed, and honestly, I was kind of burned out from the piano. So post-college me, was becoming an increasingly successful piano teacher. I was gaining more students and becoming more confident as a piano teacher. And yet, after music school, I was not satisfied with my life because this wasn't what I pictured myself doing with my degree. Um, so my parents actually encouraged me to pursue my art for a while and they told me about an art jury that was going to take place at an art center. And so I entered some art and ended up winning the opportunity to have a gallery there. So I took it and I started doing commissioned portraits. But meanwhile, my health problems were getting worse and worse. And at one point I was so sick for about six months that I could not leave the house and I could not work. And it was becoming very expensive, both for lack of income and growing number of medical bills. And eventually I learned that I had Crohn's disease. Ultimately, I ended up having to give up my art gallery and I had to find a different teaching job that would offer health insurance benefits. I was not happy to take this job because it was not a very happy place to work. While Alaire was pursuing her career with music, I was pursuing mine with horses. And unfortunately, going to college made it all the more difficult because I had to pay the loans as well as my regular bills, and it doesn't pay much to work in a luxury field. <laughs> I wasn't getting to do as much with the horses as I wanted to, and often with horses, part of your pay is living. They often have a bunkhouse or 
RV for you to live in on the property. And one of the places I work, the slider on the RV was broken for a few months. And that made it so narrow that you could put your feet up from the couch onto the counter. <laughs> Working with horses didn't really pay my bills. And it was extremely isolating. There were weeks where I only saw people when I went to some place like Walmart for a week or two on end. And so I came back home and tried to find a job at home. I worked for dog groomers, I worked for vet hospitals, and again, with these things being more to do with animals and luxuries, they don't pay as well. A friend of mine, has, his dad has an architecture office, and they were gonna need somebody to do 3D models soon. So I taught myself SketchUp and some rendering programs and applied and got that job. And that was much more financially stable and allowed me to have enough money to be able to start buying things for my art and start getting some electronics built up for recording. After Ari got back home and we were able to start spending more time together again, things started looking better for me too. I was able to find a different job working at a different music school, which was a much happier place to be and made me much happier and able to fall in love with the piano all over again. Um, it felt like I could practice again and I was ready to start trying to chase my dreams again. Also, I was on a different medicine that made my Crohn's disease go into remission and I've been feeling so much better. So I've been able to focus more on things that make me happy instead of focusing on my medical problems and just trying to get through the day. So fast forward a few years, at my birthday, I got Lair a book of sheet music by Oscar Schuster that I had heard on an art time lapse and I rather enjoyed the song and found out that they had a whole book of sheet music so I thought Alaire would enjoy having the book for herself. And Ari was incredibly right. No sooner had I unwrapped this present at my birthday party than she was shoving me over to the piano for a scene that was very familiar from our childhood <laughs> together. We went waited until you opened all the presents. But you were fidgeting in your chair the whole time. <laughs> well, I wanted you to hear the song. <laughs> you could hardly stand it. So she shoves me over to the piano and she's like, here, play this. And she puts it in front of me. And I sit there and I'm sight reading it. And we're back to commenting on it and we're having fun and we're giggling and critiquing the composer and I'm complaining about weird rhythms and awkward reaches and stuff and we were having so much fun and her mom was just sitting um, being amused by our antics indeed i imagine that it reminded her of us as children as much as it reminded us <laughs> but this is where a light bulb moment happened that's about when ari had an amazing idea I thought we could make a piano channel much like the Let's Play Gamer channels where we have commentary about music and make piano a more relevant instrument again. Not just more relevant, but let it be more fun. Reveal that every performance isn't always perfect and musicians don't start out perfect. It takes a lot of work to get to even something that kind of sort of resembles perfection and realizing that perfection really doesn't even exist. And taking a bit of the pomp and circumstance out of piano performance and make it more approachable for more people. Mm -hmm. So a little bit less concert stage and a little bit more living room. Friends getting together and just enjoying music together like people used to do. And thus, we started with the idea of a piano channel being named Let's Play Piano. Unfortunately, that name was already taken. So, after a <laughs> month or more... No, it was more than a month. After a few months, we finally settled on Piano Rogues. Piano Rogues. 
like a rogue elephant. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just the roguish idea that performances don't have to be perfect. <gasps> yes. We are rogues of piano. We do not follow the norms of the piano. And we giggle a lot. Because <laughs> piano is fun! Because piano is fun! <laughs> Thanks for watching! Subscribe for more! And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Bye, Bye guys. guys! No, don't argue. Okay, go! Full speed! Don't kill the brain! <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of full speed! Ah! <laughs> ah! My side just as clean as your side. It was. No, you had giant chunk of chunkies. <laughs> <laughs>